Good Tuesday morning. I'm Father Stephen Sabridge Humbridge. This is Moments with the Master. Today is the 12th day of December 2022, and our readings today come from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, Psalms 34, and also the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, verses 18 through 32. Well, folks, I hope you've had a great weekend. I hope this week has started off great for you. I hope everything's going well. Most of all, I'm hoping that you're keeping up on all those things that build you up in the Lord. Your prayer life, your scripture reading, reflections, meditations, all those things. Because I know, folks, we're coming down the last two, three weeks before Christmas, and you got a lot of things to do. Parties to attend, family events, Christmas shopping, obviously, all those things. Guys, don't let yourself down. You know, stay strong in the Lord. Okay, so that's my little prod as always. Uh, today, today I'm going to be speaking about traditions. But not, not apostolic traditions, but traditions. Traditions we all have in our life. Traditions tend to be those things that they have a deeper meaning a, a you know, they have some depth behind just the act themselves. You know, all those family and personal traditions we have, you know, you know, habits or customs, we develop over time. And we repeat them over and over because they have a deeper purpose. You know, and there's nothing wrong with customs. There's nothing wrong with traditions. Second Thessalonians 2.15 states, so then, brethren, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions which you are taught either by word or mouth or by letter by us. You know, St. Paul is obviously speaking about apostolic traditions, you know, important traditions from, for the church. But in our everyday lives, we have important traditions, traditions that are, you know, our parents or, you know, somebody important passed down to us especially those traditions that are related to our faith. You know, there are millions of Christian households celebrating Advent. They're getting ready to celebrate our Savior's birth with their individual, you know, family traditions. And that's a great thing because it builds us as a body closer to each other. As families, it tightens those bonds of, of love and respect. You know, all over the world, you know, people are are, are enjoying those those things that, that make it make this time of year so special to us. And beyond the they go beyond the marketing and beyond the hype of, of you know the, the tinsel and the and the packaging and the the all those secular things that just get in the way of of our of our faith you know but traditions have a, a power that goes beyond those you know and they can they can stay with us a lifetime rabbi jonathan Sachs, who was the former chief rabbi of the united kingdom stated for 4,000 years, our people survived because every generation of Jews made their highest priority to hand their faith to their children. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful statement of 4,000 years. Moreover, Rabbi Sachs believed that the essential element of education was, as he put it, a constant conversation between the generations think about it this is a great year when we all come together from great-grandparent to, to great-grandchild to pass on what we believe and you know we don't have to preach at them and 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 you know you know beat it over their heads simple traditions help us pass on what we believe and I think that this time of year, especially this time of year, 
we should utilize our time wisely. Think about what we want to pass on to our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren. You know, with our stories, our traditions, and our ideals. You know, it's a great time. You know, you know at 60 years old, I can, I can still remember my grandparents, my great-grandmother, and what they had to pass on to me, not only with the, with the festive time of year, but also what it meant that Christ was the reason for the season. St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11, 2, I commend you because you remember me in everything and maintain the traditions just as I handed them to you. And then again in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21, but examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good. Traditions, they're good for us. They impart special meanings. They, they build our characters. They build our faith. You know, so creating simple family traditions are gonna be something that I think that everyone should strive to do. You know, especially for those new, new parents out there, you're gonna to wanna to pass on what your parents and and your grandparents taught you, especially if they were they're strong in the Lord. So how are we going to do that? As how was, I got a list. And number one on my list is something I enjoy: a holiday meal. You know, you might not be a a, a regular church attender. You might not be, you know, that Christian that just has all the answers or, or has, has read the scriptures through a lot, but a holiday meal. By sharing your time and your food and your and your fellowship, you bring family and, and friends together, especially those friends who don't have anybody at this time of year. You bring them into your household and you, you show them the love and the, and the consideration and that, that they're important, that they're special. That creates strong bonds. It shares our faith with actually, without actually having to say anything. You know, so when you're stuffing that bird, you're glazing that, that ham, you're, you know, you're making whatever uh, special uh, foods that you have at this time of year, when you're celebrating Christmas, or, you know, it could be Easter, it could be any, any of the special holidays, the, the holy days, you're reinforcing the Christian values, our traditions in your own home. You know, to go along with the holiday meal, number two is prayers. I always tell you, keep up with your prayer. Your children, your grandchildren should always see you in prayer. That's a, that's a great, you know, memory for them to, to hold in their minds. Dad, mom, grandparents, in prayer. It's great. So, you know what? At this time of year, you know, we have the Christmas dinner, you know, some, and, you know, f further on next year, we have Easter supper. Maybe it's just a regular night at the kitchen table. Begin the meal with a prayer. Something quick, something easy, doesn't have to be long and drawn out. You know, it's, it's a way that we as Christians can reaffirm our thanks to the Lord for our, our day's necessities. You know, our, our prayers at, at, at mealtime affirm our faith and express our gratitude to our Lord. You know, it recognizes his presence in our lives. That's something, again, for the children to see. Number three, something I always enjoy. Decorating the tree. Okay, yeah, I know that a lot of you are going to say, that. well, the tree isn't a symbol of Christian religion. Yeah, I, I, I get it. But it's the tradition. Tradition's important. Like putting up the nativity scene, you know, going to midnight mass. It creates a family ritual, and it, it forms stronger family ties that, and memories that last a lifetime. You know, it won't be long till I, I go to my mother's house. 
and I pick up all of those those decorations for my 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 mother and I I decorate her house under under her supervision and it's something we've been doing a long time and we talk about what we believe our faith our faith of our of our grandparents you know even at my age it's still something that's very special okay the next thing on the list is donating your time a great tradition that some families have that i know and particularly they donate their time to the homeless kitchens from great-grandparents to grandchildren you know one and all they they go out there and they 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 help feed the homeless other families i know they spend time making food baskets at their at their faith communities you know and that way they help other families during this time to make their holidays their, their, their christmas just a little bit better these are great traditions to pass on the meaning of, of christian charity we see many traditions in the scriptures especially in the old testament and they were designed as opportunities for god's people to remember our lord and what he's done for us you know, to honor him and to, to remind us remind ourselves of the story of our salvation author noel piper writes a tradition is a planned habit with significance that includes the handing down of information belief and worldview from one generation to another by regular re repetition examples ceremonies celebrations and for the christian it's the tradition of laying up god's word in our own hearts and passing his words to the next generation folks it's a wonderful time of year to pass on what we believe as christians to the next generation maybe not only to the next generation but to our friends our co-workers our schoolmates folks traditions are important when we use them wisely they can they can build up the body of the lord well those have been my reflections i hope you found them useful i wish you all the best this advent season may the lord bless and keep you may the lord hold you in the palm of his hand until we meet again